For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Welcome back to another edition of the Focus program. I'm Paul Dingaman. We are glad you are here. We've got a very cultural kind of show for you today. <laughs> we got some theater stuff, some music stuff, and some art stuff. So don't go anywhere. Come on in and watch the show. We are glad you're here. The Snug Theater has got a new play. We're going to hear all about it from the screenwriter and one of the actors. Yes. Jim, nice to meet you. Very Paul nice Lehman. to meet you, Welcome Paul. to the Focus Set. Very nice to and meet you. And you brought along Tom Sharada. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Talk to me about Popcorn Falls. What is Popcorn Falls? Well, Popcorn Falls is a, a lighthearted comedy, farce, hilarious uh, show about two actors who have to play 24 characters. 24 characters. 24 characters. <laughs> he has to play more than I do, so he has works even oh harder. Oh my God. So, How um, do you keep it straight? We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, and we play everyone in this town of Popcorn Falls. And what we need to do, this town needs to put on a play okay. in one week and one minute okay. in order to save the town because the big town next to them wants to take them over. So it oh. becomes a farce. It's sort of like, we like to think of it as uh, The Simpsons meets It's a Wonderful Life meets Dumb and Dumber. Meets, oh my God. Yeah, so it, it's, uh, and we're <laughs> Dumb and Dumber. And you wrote it. And I wrote it, yes. My God, How, what was the inspiration for you to write the play? You know, I was, we did Mary Poppins together on Broadway. Okay. And we were about, five feet away we would be changing our clothes between the scenes and and I and I would read sometimes I would read the paper during the during the scene changes and there was a story about a town in Michigan <laughs> that went bankrupt and I would made me very sad and I thought well that you know you hear about all the right. little towns and then I found out about a town in Texas that uh, got a check for their theater but they didn't have a theater so, but they wanted the money, so they took the check and they said, we're starting a theater. You got the germ, germ of an idea right there. <laughs> yep. So I put those two things together, and during our quick changes, I would be like, well, what do you think better, Tom? And da 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 I said, well, what if it's all two people? Right. So that it, so that, because I, that would be even funnier. Right. To watch two people do it all. And he's really good at a bunch of character stuff. So, uh, so that's how it was built, and then slowly we just figured out a plot and thought, well, what would be funny and what would be entertaining and, you know, trying to find the, the, the line of the, 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 the spine of the play. And you uh, you performed it already. Uh, there was a review. Where's the review from? Uh, 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 Encore? Oh, that was from Ann Arbor. That, Ann Arbor. We didn't perform it, uh, but there's a theater in uh, Theater Nova that did it in oh, Ann Arbor. Oh, okay, in Ann Arbor. And okay. uh, I went to see that, and that was really fun, and that was great to see. And they were really the first ones, and then I could take from that and change stuff right. or, or uh, Add and you delete. know, adjust. Yeah, exactly. And so have you guys performed it before this no, performance? No. First time. This will be our first time. So tomorrow night will be our first time ever be in front of an audience. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's yeah. That's wonderful. But you both have extensive backgrounds in Broadway. Talk yeah. to me about you. Okay. Um, like I said, we did Mary Poppins. That was my last Broadway show, the last one I did. Uh, my first one was called City of Angels. Mm -hmm. um, that was, a, that was a, a big hit on Broadway many years ago. Uh, I've done Cats. I did Once Upon a Mattress with Sarah Jessica Parker. I did The Foreigner with Matthew Broderick. Wow. Um, I did the revival of 1776 on Broadway. I did... Uh, uh, one called A Grand Night for Singing, which was a big Roger yep. Hammerstein yep. review. Um, I've toured doing uh, Broadway Lots touring of, of Joseph, and I've been on a lot of TV shows. Is this your first attempt at playwriting? No. No, I've written about eight shows, probably. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're here in town. Uh, Tom, talk yeah. to me about you and what your role is. you got 24 roles in this? Well, between us, we have 24 roles. Okay. Um, but, and we play everything from male, female, three years old to 90 years oh, old, marvelous. everything in between. Um, all sorts of kooky, wacky characters, um, very eccentric people, uh, and it, it's just very, very funny and, and, and over the top, offbeat, 
Is it similar to when you were in Mary Poppins, except you do the, the clothes changes on stage? Or you, <laughs> no, well, that's actually well, a good observation. Yeah. yeah, but in Mary Poppins, we had a little, a lot more time off stage because there was so many other people that were doing right. things. We we start the show and we pretty much almost never leave stage, okay. except to leave and then en re-enter two seconds later. So we're constantly on stage with each other, changing Costume characters changes. before your very eyes. It's not some, we don't really change costumes too much. Personality. We, personality, and then maybe a, a hat or some glasses, things like that, because there are sometimes, there are some scenes where there's five or six characters on stage at the same time. Mm -hmm. So. Obviously, there's not five or six of us. There's mm -hmm. only two of us. So we literally, from line to line, change characters. There's, um, there's. I think there's one section where it's two pages where I'm the only person talking, and oh it's like God. five different characters, one after another, going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So it's Notice split second. Right, yeah. right, right, right. I'm no dummy. That's right. Yeah. That was typecast writing. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Very good. Well, you guys are going to be performing uh, through August the 27th. Mm -hmm. Right. And they've added Wednesdays, right, uh, Brittany? As yeah, it's selling so well, we had to add a, a few performances. That's wonderful. Um, and you can still get tickets, though, at um, uh, riverbanktheater.com. Okay. Uh, and it, as always, the tickets are only $26. Yeah, yeah. it's a bargain. It's, it's, it's a comedy. Is it uh, family friendly or a little yes, adult? Yes, absolutely. No, it's, it's family friendly. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and uh, what else can we say? That just 15 characters, 24 characters, uh, fast paced comedy farce. Uh, and it, there's a lot of similarities to stuff that went on in Michigan with in grants, getting grants. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, what's, uh, what is interesting, you know, I'm from this area, Mount Clemens, and kay. we used to come to St. Clair yeah. all my life, right. uh, you know, by boat or whatever, um, was that we started writing this and working on it. And then I said to my, my sister said, what are you working on? And I said, a show called Popcorn Falls. And she said, well, that's like Kathy and Tom Burton. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? Because I didn't know. And she yeah. said, yeah, you have to call my friend Kathy. So right. I did. And from the stuff she told me, I adjusted the show. Because it really is true that a theater can transform. Correct. A, a city, correct, yeah. or a town. Yeah, and, people uh, eat in the restaurants, they shop in the stores, yeah. they they drink in the bars, and then they go to the show. So, yeah. so I added all that to the show, and so it really is, you know. So Marine you made city. it. You made it. You zeroed it right in on our communities. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's marvelous. Yeah, that's it's an extra added bonus. Yes. So that's wonderful. Well, you guys are, are very interesting. I'm certainly glad and honored that you, you stopped by. And I, I'll bet you, as you said, tickets are really going good. Yeah, yeah they're selling really great. And yeah. at the Snug, we only got 90 seats. Correct. Yeah. So they've got to, they'll go quick. Yeah. yeah. And uh, performances on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday through uh, August 27th. Yeah. And Saturday and Sunday, too. Yeah. And Saturday and Sunday. Sunday, I'm sorry. At, yeah. Sunday at 3 o'clock. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, so have we missed anything? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we got it all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very nice to meet you. It is so nice to I'm, meet you. I'll look forward to seeing the movie. Pleasure yeah. to meet you, too. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> uh, coming up next, Mr. Jason Steyer, also from the Marine City down area, down at uh, Riverbank, River Bank, River uh, View East High School. <laughs> and he'll be along and talk to us about the block program. We'll be right back. Well, I've got my block. Do you have your block? You need to know about what this is. There's a great project coming out of the St. Clair Art Association and being headed up by uh, one of the guys on the Public Art Committee, Mr. Jason Steyer. Welcome back to Focus Set. Thanks, Paul. Nice Ball. to see you, sir. Nice to see you. Uh, you have had a good summer. I followed you on Facebook, and now you're getting you're running uh, full speed ahead back at Riverview East oh, High School right. as the art teacher. Right. And you've got four or five exciting opportunities for people to get involved in. Oh, absolutely. And they all just kind of fit together and, and really promote this whole idea of creativity, collaboration, and community. Okay. Uh, how, what are they and how do we get involved? Uh, the first project is, uh, like you said, through the St. Clair Art Association's Public Art Committee. Uh, just a quick reminder that there is an exhibit at the St. Clair Art Association that runs through the first week of September uh, that looks back on the, uh, the last decade of public art projects that we've done oh, throughout really? the community. Okay. So we encourage people to come out and see that while it's still up and see all that our committee has done uh, and learn more about the block project, which has been underway since uh, this past 
uh, last spring, I think, is when we really kicked it off. Uh, and the idea behind the block project is to really unite our community. Uh, so we picked the idea of a block. There for, seems like to be a lot of uh, dissension in the United States these days. You know, even so as maybe, we speak today. Right. It's even more than, a, than when you were here in June. It's absolutely urgent that right. we find ways to, to unite each other and Correct. understand each other and bring each other together right. and tap into our and strengths. So this, this is a good example. Uh, if Jared will roll the next uh, picture there. We'll talk about what the, actually the block project yes, is. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we're providing the community with four foot by four foot wooden blocks. Uh, we pick blocks because they're something simple that people start to create with when they're young. Uh, it's not intimidating. Uh, and also represents the blocks of our city. Okay. Uh, so the idea is to, to get people together with their neighbors. Uh, we have schools, individuals, civic organizations that are all coming together to turn these ordinary blocks into phenomenal works of art. Okay. Uh, so currently we have over 30 blocks that Do are out really? there throughout the community. Um, some are being uh, kind of kept under wraps until they're finished. Roll of the night, uh, there we go. We've had youth groups uh, working through the city of St. Clair, uh, coming together and sharing their ideas and turning their blocks into art. Now, like that, that oh, no, we, I've driven by this one a hundred times and didn't know what it was. Exactly. So you can see that that they transformed far beyond the original block concept, which is exactly what we're looking for. We're trying to tap into people's talents and skills and imaginations and see what they can do when they come together uh, and, and bring ideas to life. So this is on the corner of Third and J. Um, those thirty blocks will all be brought together in the Riverview Plaza. And on October 21st, uh, we're going to host a community block party. Oh, so wonderful. I, so everyone can come out and, and celebrate our shared accomplishments and just uh, celebrate the idea of coming together. Okay. Uh, so that's coming up uh, in Plaza Park, and we're encouraging all the businesses and people in our community to, uh, you know, come up with activities to involve each other and just get, get to know each other better and, and bring our community closer together. Where are the blocks that, that are in work now, are in process now, the ones who are from the rectum are, where are they hiding someplace? Uh, a lot of them are hiding. They're in garages and pole barns, backyards. Uh, there are some that you can get a peek of. Like if, the, if you know like the pirate look. ship like there. Like the pirate ship, which is complete and on the corner of 3rd. And, and you've got five. a couple of them in the Riverview Plaza. There are currently five in the plaza that you can come out and interact with. Uh, there are game boards incorporated. So if in I've got zone. a church or a, a, a office party group or whatever, and I want to get, I want to do one. How do I do that? Contact me personally. And we'll deliver it to you and uh, assist you in any way that we can. And what is how? What is that address? Uh, the best way to reach me is my email, which is j s t i e r at e c s d dot u s. Okay. And they we'll... can also call the St. Clair Art Association, um, but I'm not hard to track down. What? What is Art Prize then? Art how Prize, does, how does that tie in? Uh, art Prize is a uh, it's really a global art event that takes place in Grand Rapids every September. So there's one coming up this year, um, and they draw artists from all over the world and display art throughout the entire community of Grand Rapids. Uh, so our goal is to take all of our completed blocks to Art Prize in 2018 and display our community and all that we're capable of uh, for for that global audience. For 2018. That's right. Wow. Well, that's quite a logo there themselves. Right. Okay, well, that's, that's the incentive. Now, these pictures are very interesting, and this is something unique, too. Yeah, so this is an opportunity that kind of came to us. Um, Inside Out is a global art movement that was started by uh, a world-renowned photographer by the name of J.R. Um, J.R. has used the, the world and the communities throughout as his canvas. Uh, he goes around, he meets people in these various communities, uh, he captures uh, their portraits, and then they print them large scale and paste them in highly visible areas so that people see who the people are that they live around. Uh, they get to see um, what these people uh, find and value in their lives, and it, it just kind of nurtures a conversation of what's mm -hmm. important to people. Um, so we've been invited to take part of this, uh, along with the XQ Super School Project, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but the idea is they're doing a 50-state campaign. They're picking one school from each of the 50 states to do a inside out art movement. So we're gonna capture people in our community, our students, our teachers, our community stakeholders. We're gonna get their portraits and we're gonna utilize the block project to put those portraits out into highly visible areas in our community and generate the conversation around education, the needs of our youth, and the needs of our community. Have you started taking your pictures? We're gonna start. Okay. Uh, next week, uh, on the 24th, we have an open house at Riverview East High School. 
Uh, we're going to start capturing the portraits of our, our students, our staff. We're inviting community members to come in and take part. Uh, we're aiming for a minimum of 50 portraits. Uh, they will print as many as we take, and we will incorporate those into a public art project. Have you been picked as the, the high school? We are the high school for, for the, the state, state of Michigan. Correct. Phenomenal. Phenomenal indeed. I mean, it's just such a great opportunity to uh, give our students a voice. Yes. Uh, to get our, our community talking about what we value and what we can do when we come together and, and really uh, look at what our priorities is, uh, are in terms of strengthening um, our schools and, and everything else that relates to education. Again, how can people help you on this one? They can visit our school on the 24th between 10 and 1 and get their portrait taken. Um, we're going to have the action where we're actually pasting these portraits on blocks the following weeks when school starts. Um, and they can just continue to support the block project so that, that grows and gains momentum. This is August 24th at what, from what time? 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. At Riverview East High School in Marine right. City. That's okay. Right. All right, next picture there, Jared. So these images are from the XQ Super School project. Um, that project was started by Ruslan Ali, who is the former Secretary of Civil Rights for the U.S. Department of Education, along with um, Lorraine Powell Jobs, who you may recognize her not name. She's the widow of Steve Jobs. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. So yes. they've come together with other groups and organizations, and they're traveling around the country to uh, rethink high school. Uh, is it relevant? Is it meaningful? Are they engaging students with their communities? Are they giving uh, students a sense of purpose? Are they meeting the needs of the 21st century workplace? And they're encouraging educators and, and community leaders to rethink that and really provide students with the, the education they deserve. Okay. So Riverview East has been part of that. XQ has, has been supporting our journey. Um, and then they're going to have actually a live broadcast on September, uh, September 8th on all the major networks. Uh, ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC. Wow. They're going to showcase. I wonder the, who coordinated all that. That's uh, huge. Absolutely. This is a, just an enormous movement right. uh, that we're privileged to be part of. And they're going to highlight what's happening with the XQ project uh, along with that Inside Out project. And to repeat once again, Riverview East High School in Marine City is the only one in the state of Michigan involved in this. That's right. We were personally Jason, that's, to take that's part. wonderful. So, yeah, that's I mean, wonderful. just talking about just taking the movement to the next level and, and just letting our voices be heard. Yeah. It's, it's a phenomenal opportunity. You've got, uh, you know, over the years I've had the opportunity to know many of the students from Review East mm -hmm. through you. Right. And, and they, they have such great talent and such great potential. Absolutely. And so many people in our community do, but don't always have that opportunity to, to let it shine or to, to utilize it in a way that makes their life uh, feel fulfilled or to have a sense of meaning and purpose. Okay. Well, all right. I'm getting off track here, but go ahead. What, where, where, what's your next item? Uh, well, the next thing is, is part of the XQ Super Project has spurred a movement to create a youth-driven teen center oh, yes. uh, in our community. All right. So we're currently looking for locations uh, in Marine City. Uh, I just toured the former City Hall building okay. uh, this How's morning. How's it coming? Uh, it needs a lot of work. Yep. It needs a lot of support, but it has great potential. Uh, for not only becoming a, a place for students to gather beyond the hours of school, but also to uh, eventually become a community-wide enrichment center. Mm -hmm. So we're really pushing forward. We have a lot of support in the community to bring all these pieces together and create opportunities uh, that are meaningful to, to those who see You've had now. a good nucleus of young people who've uh, gotten together with, the, with uh, Gary Coase and, and uh, Laura at the Mariner, and they've given them great support. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and trying to get a teen center kicked off. Absolutely, absolutely. And that, those are just a couple of the names. The students are really the driving Dave, force behind Dave Simpson this. worked on the committee. Yep. And they've gone forth. This is now an official 5013C organization. Is it really? Good. Thanks to the students and all their hard work. They're learning these real life skills, these meaningful skills that they can apply uh, to, to active change in the community. And the reward that you see and the transition that you see in these students uh, cannot be matched. Okay. Uh, so again, Gary and Laura have been driving forces, Dave Simpson, uh, the mayor of Marine City, uh, various groups and individuals coming together to support this, and we're getting closer and closer to opening those doors. We're going to meet with the city in a couple of weeks and, and hopefully get permission to renovate the space and, and open those doors to our youth. Okay. Um, Gary and Laura has, have also uh, offered to host uh, the XQ Super School viewing party, uh, which is, again, on September 8th. We're going to host that at the Mariner Theater. And again, anyone in the community who has any interest in 
uh, our youth in education and creating a better world to live in. We encourage them to come out and become part of that conversation. Right. Well, you never stop, sir. We're really, really lucky to have a Jason Steyer in our community, and, and obviously we continue to salute you for all your efforts and, and all, the, all, the, my, all the children and all the students that you've helped change and make better people. is uh, got to be very gratifying for you. Well, thank you, Paul. It does indeed take a village. It really does. All right, so the first one to remember is August the 24th, stop down Riverview East. Where's our Riverview East? Uh, it's, <coughs> excuse me, right off of Ward Street. Uh, we share the complex with Green City High School and Middle School. It's on the back side? It's on the back side. Park by the, the gyms. The large lot back there by the tennis courts, and you'll see the sign star building. Okay. So you come between 10 in the morning and 1, have your picture taken, mm -hmm. and it's going to appear in great big banners. That's right. Well, it's exciting. Then, the uh, September the 8th, yep. there's a, uh, a television event which will be shown live at the Mariner. Correct. Okay. Yes. That's free. That's free, absolutely. And then October the 21st, there's a big party That's the big in the Riverview uh, Plaza downtown, right. St. Clair. And uh, if anybody needs any more information about blocks, this is the guy to get a hold of, Steyer at ECSD. I got it right. You got it. Dot US. That's By golly, I got it. I got all the numbers and all the names. This block is a little uh, miniature, but you should get involved. We'll be back with some music right here, live on CTV's Focus program with uh, the uh, running. Oh, now I'm going to forget their name. Oh my God, they, they won't come on. Uh, still running, still running. I had it backwards. Still running. So they'll be right along and talk about Thumbfist 2017. We'll be right back. There's been a little event that's just grown and grown and grown, and it's now 15 years old. It's called Thumbfest. This year it's going to be called Thumbfest 2017. The artistic director, that's pretty, he's got a big long title on a door someplace. Yeah. Mr. Mike Mercantine is along oh, to talk nice to, to us about it. And Jenna Reed, who is from Still Running, yes. is yes. going to be here. And we're going to have them play in a minute. But let's begin with Mr. Mercantine about Thumbfest 2017. It's here again. It's, it's wonderful. It's here again. It seems like just yesterday that we were doing this uh, yeah. last, last year. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you two here. Uh, thank you so much for having us. Uh, Jason Steyer, who was our previous uh, interview, just said it's the end of summer for him. It's just it's it's the the event of the summer that he oh, you know, he knows he's got to go to. Then he goes back to teaching. You know, but yeah. but uh, he loves it. So yeah, it's, how, it's what, what's happening this year. Uh, this is our 15th year, as you said. Saturday, um, September 2nd. We'll start at 10.30 in the morning, go all the way till 10 o'clock at night. Oh, my God. Yep. Very, very long day. Yes. But it's wonderful because you, it's all throughout downtown Lexington, yep. and there are different stages in different spots you can walk to. There's a, there's a, a shuttle bus that'll take you around. Um, and you can walk from one spot to the other and just hear the transition of music. Oh, I like all that. All through stage. I like that. It's kind of like different musical birds. You, you, yeah. walk, you walk through the, yep. uh, the streets of Lexington and you'll just hear, you know, there's like Cajun music over there, then you hear an Irish band over there. And so I, we have the schedule published and everything. So, I, you know, I encourage people to look at that and to see, you know, catch their favorite acts or whatever. But because you're going to have to plan out your day. But, yeah. Because <laughs> you can't see everything. But but you want to. You, I, I really encourage people to to leave some space in there to just wander and and just maybe discover something that you you haven't really checked out before because there there's almost every kind of musical genre there. How many acts? There's over 50 this year. 50 acts. Yeah. So it, it's it's. It's really fun trying to schedule this thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you have players. Uh, every year we have players that play in different bands, so you got to make sure they're not in the same place and uh, at the same time, so you don't double book them. And, uh, you yeah. brought along some. Oh, there's some pictures here. Yep. So let's run through a couple of the groups that are going to be there. Okay, that's Creole du Nord. They have been playing for the last few years at Thumbfest. They're one Ooh, of our headliners uh, there. They, they play Creole, Ooh, Cajun, Cajun music. Cajun yeah. music. Les Bontemps yeah. Roulet. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And Je that, bien. that's the accordion player from that band, too. It's a nice picture. That is a woman who is uh, she, brings, she brings and sells hula hoops. Mm -hmm. And all day, 
She hoops. I wish I had Does she them. sing too? Or no, oh, she no, just, no, just hoops. She's just a vendor there because there's, there's many uh, craft vendors mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So you can wander around. Down it's, at the main it's, stage. It's so like a mini Lexington Art Fair there too. Oh my God. Yeah, it's but, a lot of fun. There's going to be um, uh, local honey. There's a uh, bee's knees apiary. There's going to be popcorn. Uh, they've got vendors who sell food, so there's going to be uh, the Whispering Smoke Barbecue is going to be there. Thumb Roast Coffee is coming oh back. Oh, my God. It's really, really good coffee. That is Jill Jack. She is a really well-known uh, Detroit performer. She's won over 30 Detroit Music Awards oh my God. in various yeah. categories. Um, she is just great. Is she, she bringing her whole band this year? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. it's really well, You're going to show up this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah right. it's really, she, she's I'm fine. actually introducing her, so oh, I'm not seeing her. So, yeah, okay, so next. She's very exciting. That is Joe Sarah Pear, and she has a, she's leading a honky-tonk style band this year. Um, she has appeared twice on Prairie Home Companion. Oh, my God. Um, and she has won multiple Detroit Music Awards, too. She has okay. several albums out. Great that shot. Is, that yeah. is the Red Sea Pedestrians. They are from the Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo area. And they play uh, really Play one of the instruments that I'm famous for. Yeah. Tambourine. <laughs> Tambourine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and cowbell, probably. Too. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> And that is uh, Matt Watroba and Robert Jones. They were both, uh, uh, they had shows on, on WDET. WDET. Yep, and they are wonderful folk performers. And they will take you through a whole trip of American music from its earliest origins up to now. They are, they're just Marvelous. wonderful. They're doing a, a set as a duo and they're doing uh, individual sets. Okay. And look at that lady. Hey, hey, and that lady, I'm not sure that? who that is. <laughs> She was a blonde until about a week ago. I think so, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great picture. Yeah, of that's us and still running. You have one of those wonderful, I've... wonderful smiles. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and Go ahead. Next. Next. Uh, that is a band called... Uh, taller Than They Appear. Ingrid, I can't remember her last name, but Taller Than They Appear is the name of that band. And they, they play some very eclectic and exotic instruments. Hmm. Uh, they'll have on stage sometimes like 30 or 40 different instruments. Oh my God. They're, they're very a lot of interesting. Fun. They're very people. interesting. This whole thing's free, too. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the oh operative word. Look at that group. They'll, that's the Luddites. They're out of Detroit based group, and they build themselves as the loudest acoustic band in the world. <laughs> um, they're they 14. They do a lot of Spanish stuff. They do a lot of uh, ethnic influence, so some of it's gypsy music, some okay. of it is, and then some of it's rock and roll. I just picked that up from her, yeah, her dress and like, the guy's hats. Yeah, uh -huh. and that's Whistle Stop Review. They're local guys from here in Port Huron. They are some amazing bluegrass pickers. Um, they're, they're some of the best pickers around in the region. They play festivals. Is all this the over. picture? That's the park in uh, in, 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 in Lexington. Lexington. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. facing from the behind the harbor stage. Yeah. They're looking right. out, and that's one of our hoot nannies. That's the Yellow Room Gang, uh, and they are actually a collection. All those people play in different groups, so it's kind of a super group of performers. So there's Matt Rattle right there in mm -hmm. the middle. Mustard's Retreat, there, there's Jim Weiser and Jan Chris. They're all really well-known performers all throughout Rod Michigan. Rod and Caps. Yeah, Rod and Annie Caps. Wow. And Kitty Donahoe's there, okay, too. Okay, now, you got a contest also going out at the same time. What's that about? Yes, um, we really wanted to reach out and, and continue the folk tradition, and you, you got you to gotta have kids. So. <laughs> And you got to learn to play well, somewhere. And, and it is a mission so, of the Blue Water Folk Society to promote acoustic music. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so we've got, this is our first year doing this. It's, it's the Rising Stars Contest. And it's only for performers who are from 19 and, 19 and under. And then there's two categories. There's the best original song. Oh. And there's also best performance. So, and you can do one or the other or both. And first prize is $150. Oh my God. And second prize is 75 and third is 50. But to be able to get your song or your, yes. mm -hmm. your act up on mm -hmm. the stage yep. is great. In, in front of Are a, these individual people or groups? Uh, they, they, it can be either. It can be either, yeah. okay. Yep, yep. It's, it's yep. as long as the age requirements. Okay. And so the, the, the stage that is at Thumbfest is actually a juried stage. So the performers actually will already have auditioned. Okay which helps give them a run through it and also just helps you, mm -hmm. you know make sure that they're ready mm -hmm. great so yeah okay.
Yeah, so we're really excited. And they're being judged by, by local musicians and stuff. Okay. And not not us. Got, got another one over <laughs> yep, there? yep. Uh, this is, I believe, our third or fourth year doing the Guitars for Kids giveaway. So again, fulfilling uh, our mo mission of promoting music to young people in the area. We have instruments that have been donated to us or purchased uh, by Blue Water Folk Society members to give away to kids. And uh, this year we have eight guitars and five ukuleles. Oh my God, so that's wonderful. It's, it, it's really a great program. And it's for kids 10 to 17 years old. And you come, you go to the Lions Hall, Lions Club Hall there, and there's an application table, and basically you fill out the information, and there's like a little essay about why you want to play and why it's important to you and stuff. And those are judged by by perform musicians that are performing and some other judges, and then we uh, uh, we give them away. It's going to be September the second. September second. Ten in the morning until. Ten thirty in the morning until ten o'clock at 10, night. Ten yep. to ten. Yep. In yep. Lexington, Brown Michigan, figure. free. Free is the big word. Yep. yep. All Every, day. Downtown Mar uh, Lexington. Yep. Michigan. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful downtown. You were talking about guitars, mm -hmm. and there's one sitting behind you there gathering <laughs> dust. Where did they come from? Where did they come from? Can oh you grab God. it and maybe uh, play a number for us here? Well, or two, or whatever be, is up to... I guess we could be kind yeah, to doing do that. It. Still running. How long has Still Running been together? Uh, 12 what are we, 12 years? 12 years? 12 years. We're going to say 12. Yeah. We'll wow. say twelve. <laughs> <laughs> and you have Well, you have nice honor. guitars laying around here. <laughs> And you've had the honor of uh, being the, uh, uh, the the winter whiteout winner mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, a few in, years back. A few yeah, years yeah. back, that, uh, two Dan years. Lockwood's event. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. Uh, it's always a lot of fun to play yeah. that. So go ahead. Get All right, here. let us, let us uh, uh, have some, some music. I'll get those right. up so you can, they can get a good shot. You got to fill those full of whiskey. Right. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> Next week. Okay. We're gonna do a song for Bob Dylan.
magnificent, just magnificent. Uh, the sound of one fan clap. <laughs> yeah, one fan, big, big hands, yeah. though, big hands. Uh, if you got a short one, I know you've got to get going. Yeah, we, but. yeah, we, there's a, one that's a new one to us. It's by a, a guy named Matis Yahoo, and it took me about three weeks to learn. He's an Irish name. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or I, Matis Yahoo. I, I believe he's Israeli, but he sings reggae. What a, what a name, not, what a name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's hear his music. Okay. Okay. And there's there's something a song in the middle too that you may recognize. Okay. So this is kind of a mosh of a couple of songs. Okay. This one's called One Day. It, it's uh, uh, a good song for you. Okay. Times. Oh yes. There's three instruments here. Okay. Your two voices in that guitar. This beautiful yeah. stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. It's always a pleasure to we see you. We really appreciate your support, Paul. Oh, no, it's no problem. The, the support we're trying to pro, uh, produce today is for Thumbfest mm -hmm. 2017. 
It's September the 2nd, beautiful downtown Lexington. Okay. Yep. 10 to 10. 10.30 to 10. Yep, you can get there at 10 o'clock. Get there at 10 o'clock and yeah. get a good parking yeah. spot. I'm, I'm and people do, and people do that, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they, park, they park their chairs out, and there's favorite spots. So Jenna, it, thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's about it for uh, this edition of the uh, Focus Program. Thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, lots of good stuff out of this program for you and your family. Till next time, I'm Paul Dingaman. See you soon. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.